So it's been a few hours since you said that you face imminent arrest. What happens now and what are you seeing is going to be the future of Imran Khan and the PTI? Well, PTI future, let me just say, if you have a vote bank, no amount of arrests. They, they have arrested seven and a half thousand uh, members of PTI. Our entire top leadership is arrested. Uh, you know, there are about 150 cases on me, so I could be arrested any time. But the point is, you cannot arrest an idea whose time has come. The, if you look at the polls, the poll ratings, the surveys, PTI is 70% now. So this, no party has had such popularity. So this is, this is madness what is going on. They're trying to um, basically kill democracy because, you know, by killing the biggest or trying to uh, crush the biggest party in the country, uh, the only federal party in the country, they're, they're actually dismantling democracy. This program might hear when you might be behind bars, uh, as you said that an arrest is imminent. Uh, my question was that what happens to Imran Khan if he goes to jail and what happens to the Pakistan Tehreek again south? Well, I was in jail for four days uh, and I had no idea what was going on uh, because you, I was completely cut off from all news. So it was only after four days I discovered what had happened since I was, uh, when, when I was abducted from the precincts of the High Court, Islamabad, unlawfully as ruled by the Supreme Court. And so it was only afterwards I discovered the, the, uh, uh, the demonstrations and the impact. Uh, and, and sadly, 25 people died of that we know about. And there were up to 600 people who got injured, 600 uh, people got injured. So what I don't want is uh, if I'm jailed again, I do not want violence because violence feeds into the narrative of, uh, of the PDM or the, these parties who are petrified of elections because they then use that violence to then clamp down on us and, and uh, this crackdown on us where they just, anyone affiliated with PTI is just thrown into jail. But the 7,500 people who've been arrested, uh, as the government has been saying, the cases against them are of incitement, aiding, abetting, violence. We saw uh, ambulances being burned, public property being torched. These are people who are chanting for you. Look, all this is, you can easily, through a proper investiga investigation, find out that a party for 27 years has never indulged in violence. When I was shot, I, they almost killed me. 12 of our people got bullet wounds. Even then there was no arson. I mean, surely when they try and kill the head of a party and, and you know, people saw me in hospital, yet... You never saw people, any build, buildings being burned and all this happening. This was a pre-planned thing. And I, in front of your viewers, I'm saying any independent investigation will prove this. How can the core commander's house, now remember, we grew, I have grown up in Lahore. Core commander house is about two miles from my house. We know the amount of security there. How come demonstrations were allowed to walk all the way, two hours from Liberty Chalk to there, how come there was no police there? How come it was left unguarded? How, and what about the CCTV footage? Why don't they bring that footage out? You will know who did what. This was a conspiracy. They used that, they burned the house. I know we didn't do it because the head of our Punjab, uh, 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 President Dr. Yasmin, She's sitting there and telling the demonstrators, don't go inside the house. But they've got videos of your leaders saying that we have to go to the GHQ. Shahriar Afridi, for instance, there's a video of him calling for people to go to the GHQ. Going to the GHQ is not a crime. It is part of Pakistan. You can demonstrate peacefully anywhere in this country. And when they see me being abducted by the army, the natural response would have been demonstrating peacefully in front of GHQ or whatever. But... No one called for violence. Not one of our leaders said that you go and, uh, and break things or burn down buildings. But we've never done it in 27 years. So all I want is an in independent investigation. I'm confident that everyone will be exposed. We know where the police burned their vehicles. We know Radio uh, uh, Pakistan Peshawar. There was no demonstration there. How come it got burned down? The demonstrator was three miles away. 
So I, you know, I think, if, and why hasn't there been an investigation that 25 people were shot, straight bullet wounds? All the people, hundreds of 600 people getting bullet wounds. How come there's no investigation there? In France, you see people throwing, demonstrators throwing petrol bombs at the police. How come no one shoots them there? I mean, there are demonstrations all over the world. But you don't straight, they were straight firing into the crowd. Why has there been no investigation in that? Well, the government says that it is investigating and geotagging the people who were there. It's tracking their phones and it accuses you of harboring dozens of what it calls terrorists who were involved in the arson. You see, what the, what, first of all, let's find, what is behind all this? The PDM and the establishment, they are petrified of elections. Why are they petrified? Because every service says P PTI will get two-thirds majority the moment there are elections. Now, to avoid elections, even before this, they had 145 cases on me, criminal cases. A man who's known in this country for 50 years had never had one case, criminal case, just in four or five months, 150 criminal cases. Why? To get me out of the race, get me disqualified. Two assassination attempts, one where I got shot, then there was an, I almost got killed in an, another attempt in the judicial complex in Islamabad. So why? It's to get me out of the race. So, so if you understand the reasoning by what is going on right now, the establishment and the, the PDM parties, then you will know they use this as a pretext to actually crush PTI. How can they have found that seven and a half thousand PTI workers were involved? Have they any evidence? Most of them have not even been produced in a court of law. They've just conducted a reign of terror, breaking people's houses, walking in the middle of the night. Anyone whose PTI has been attacked by the security agencies. Independent analysts say that there is, there is a pattern to what happens in Pakistan. Whoever is in government says they're on the same page as you did when you were in power. Now the people who are in power say they're hand in glove with the military establishment, the relationship has never been better as it is now. And when they come in the opposition, they accuse the party in power of taking them out of politics. Look, two different things now. Never, you in my three and a half years of power, can you tell me of any incidents like what has, ha what has been happening to the us PMLN, for one year? The PMLN was, was cracked down on. P the te television screens were not allowed to air their interviews. Their leadership was rounded up, including their women as well. This is what they're saying on television screens. It is just such a bunch of lies. First of all, during our time, there were only 5% of the cases against them. 95% of corruption cases against the PML leadership was from their own time. Remember, Isaac Dar ran away when it was P PML government. Uh, uh, Nawaz Sharif's two sons ran away from Pakistan during their government. You allowed Nawaz to leave, though. No, but first of all, all the ninety-five percent of the corruption cases were when we inherited them. Nawaz went uh, during our time, but unfortunately, you know, we didn't realize that his reports were all doctored. We thought he wouldn't survive a day. You know, we were told in the cabinet. Anyway, what I'm saying is that. You cannot even think of comparing what has happened to us in the last one year as opposed to what happened to them. I mean, when uh, Nawaz Sharif was only, why was he banned? Because he was convicted by the Supreme Court. He lied that he was ill. He left the country. A convict leaves the country, absconds from justice. And that's, he was making speeches from London. That's when the courts took a decision. I've been, why have I been banned? What? I've not even been convicted of one thing. I mean, these are all allegations. So I'm banned from television. They can't show any of my live addresses. Uh, my, my senior leadership, everyone is now lumbered with cases. All our time is spent from going from one court to the other to get bail. This never happened with PML. So now, you say that the problem is with the army chief. But you also say that you promise that you will not sack him. So which one is it? Look, all I'm saying is that the establishment is one man, the army chief. Whatever he decides, it's a disciplined army, as it should be. Now, I have no problem with him. But he seems to have a problem with me. There's something floating out on the, on the social media about 
some statement he's, or allegations he's made against me, which are quite worrisome because if he, that's what he thinks about me. But it's his problem. There's some reason why he has decided that whatever happens, Imran Khan cannot come into power. But I have no problem with him. So in other words, I was told that, you know, he's worried that if I come to power, I would sack him. I have, you know, my policy is very straightforward. Army is an institution. You don't directly, uh, uh, what is the word? I mean, you do not want to interfere with it to affect it like all our other institutions have been weakened. And if it's a surety he wants that I shouldn't sack him, well, I was willing to give it. So the, all I'm saying is the problem is not from my side. It's from the other side. Isn't the problem, it, <coughs> isn't the root of the problem beginning to when you wanted an ex-general to become the army chief instead of the current one, General Faiz Hamid, who's accused by your political opponents of engineering you into power? This is, again, a, a myth. And this myth was floated by General Bajwa. I never... A year before the uh, uh, appointment of the army chief, I never even thought about who should be the army chief. For a start, apart from General Faz, I didn't know any of the other contenders. So how could I make up my mind until I knew who, who were the people who were competing? How could I make up my mind? So I never thought about who should be the army chief. But General Bajwa told the contenders, there were four of them, that, look, I wanted to push Faz, so they all turned against me. This, of course, I discovered later on. But let me just make it clear. If I had to interfere in the army, when I knew General Bajwa was trying to oust me, he was already, I knew that the, the, the conspiracy was going on, I should have then removed him because I could have denotified him. But despite knowing all that, I decided, I said, I'm not going to interfere with the army. And so the, all I'm saying is that what is happening right now is not because of me. It's nothing I have done to antagonize the, the army chief. There is something he has on me, he has against me, which I don't know. Well, you have a history with him and he was the intelligence chief. Let's come back to uh, your power when you were in power. You had three and a half years. You were not able to provide the jobs that you promised, not able to build the homes that you promised. Why should people vote for Imran Khan? Do you know what? Today, the, the report has come off of our last year, our last year in power. The economy grew at 6.5%, which is almost a record in Pakistan. When an economy grows at 6.5%, that means you're producing jobs. That means you're creating wealth. That meant that we had the record tax collection, record exports. We had record agriculture output. I mean, this is all in the economic survey of Pakistan. It was one of the best performances in two decades of any, any government. So what... How can that be compared to what is going on right now? Inflation, despite there being an economic, uh, what is called the super cycle, when energy prices went up, from 12.2%, inflation today is 36.4%, three times as much. Uh, in fact, Pakistan's inflation is now worse than Sri Lanka. So you can't, I mean, uh, we could have done a lot of things much better. But compared to what, where we left the economy and where it is right now, there's just no comparison. Now, let's talk about uh, what the people expected of the Pakistan Tehreek Saaf. There are a lot of allegations on people that you chose to represent the PTI um, who were involved in corruption. And in our last interaction a few years ago, you said that if the captain of the ship is clean, the people will be clean. So who's this corruption on? Is, is it, does it reflect on you or is it those particular individuals? Well, look, if there's corruption, the cases should have come out now because we've been out of power now for 14 months. So surely, I mean, out of 150 cases, they have come with two corruption cases on me. One is of a charitable trust I've set up, you know, al Qadr University. They haven't shown how, how, how I made any money from it. Secondly is this Tosha Khana case, which you must understand what Tosha Khana is. For 70 years, the law in Pakistan is that if when, as a head of state, you get gifts from foreign gifts, uh, from dignitaries or so on, whether it is you are a minister or general or whatever, it goes into the Tosha Khana, which evaluates it. Then you have a chance. Do you want to buy it? Then you, in a might, the, before the 
paid 20%. In my time, it was 50%. If you wanted to buy the gift, you, you, you bought it. All that is recorded. So, I mean, these are the two cases they've come up with me in 14 months. My question was about the people that you chose. Look, I'm talking about ministers of provincial assemblies, ministers of national assemblies, your close aides, Jahangir Tareen, etc., uh, who've now been facing corruption charges, allegations, and courts. Look, if, if, if your question is that was I able to uh, clamp down on corruption, the answer is no. And why? Because NAB, which is the accountability bureau which is supposed to fight corruption, was not under me. We were told it, it was independent, but it was controlled by General Bajwa. The, uh, General Bajwa controlled NAB. So what he said, they did. Even when the NAB head used to tell me that, look, so-and-so is indulged, we found these corruption cases. So I said, why, why don't you take action? He said, we haven't got clearance. Now, the, anywhere in the world, the way you fight crime and corruption is not the severity of punishment, but the certainty of punishment. So when no one gets caught, I mean, you know, in NAB, there, are, there were hardly any convictions. So all the top guys who had these corruption cases would, would be in, in jail, not get convicted and come out. And, you know, and when you spoke to NAB, they said, look, you know, we, we are being controlled by, by, by GHQ or General Bajwa. So I was helpless there. Look, if I get a chance again, if God gives me the opportunity, the most important thing is to establish rule of law. That is the only rule of law means you cut down corruption. In Pakistan, rule of law index, in the world rule of law index, out of 140 countries, Pakistan is 129. So if you, have, if you are so low down in the rule of law index, you can't fight corruption because corruption is a symptom when there is no rule of law. So you've laid out what your plan is if you come to power next. Does Imran Khan have any regrets? Could you have done things better? If I had to do it again, uh, I would not have, uh, I would have immediately called for re-elections because with a coalition government, with a thin majority, there is no way you can implement your reform programs, mainly rule of law, because rule of law means bringing the powerful under the law. And that you can only do if you have a, a proper mandate, clear majority, because if you don't have a clear majority like I did, that all the time I was, I was blackmailed. Whenever I would go after some powerful mafia, they would somehow penetrate and, you know, I would be, I, I, I just couldn't succeed. And of course, then there was General Bajwa. He would be working behind the scenes. If he didn't want anything done or anyone convicted, you couldn't do it because he controlled that. So if Imran Khan is elected again, he will not be taking any U-turns and he will not be taking people on board who you've named like Sheikh Rashid's and Pervez Elahi's and the rest who were electables, who were essential for you to be in power? No, look, um, if, I, if I get a chance again, I will only take government if I have a clear majority. I come up with a strong majority. Because without that, I will, the most important thing for Pakistan to get out of this economic mess we are in, or the full stop, the political mess, is only one thing, rule of law. Rule of law can only, I repeat, be implemented when you have a powerful government, a clear majority. And rule of law is the beginning of the rise of Pakistan. Because you will only get, democracy can only take place when there's rule of law. Prosperity only comes when there's rule of law. Investment comes with rule of law. Countries that have secure and rule of law invite investment. So what is Dubai compared to Pakistan? Look at our resources in this country. Is but Imran people Khan, from here go and invest in Dubai. Is Imran Khan essential for, for Pakistan? What is, Imran, what is Pakistan's future with or without Imran Khan? I don't know what, you know, I'm not that uh, arrogant or, you know, believe that without me the country won't survive. But all I know is that my struggle is for 27 years and uh, the main gist of the struggle is that what I saw when I went as a teenager to England, that I discovered that without rule of law, countries, you know, don't prosper. You don't have democracy. So the key to a, a, a civilized society is where everyone is equal before the law. And unfortunately, Pakistan from its beginning 
has the law of the jungle, the powerful are above law, and poor, the ordinary people don't have access to justice. And societies like that can never uh, prosper. The entire developing world is poor, not because of lack of resources, because they don't have justice. Mr. Imran Khan, Chairman Pakistan, Tariq Saf, thank you very much for thank talking you. to Al Jazeera. Thank you. Thank you.